So I want to wel welcome everybody to the forum today. My name is Kathy Heltzer and as a proud member of the Victory Chorus, it's my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker today. Candy Winkler is the program director for the Victory Chorus. The Victory Chorus, uh, uh, chorus that has been designed for people with cognitive impairments and Alzheimer's disease and also for their care partners and also volunteer singers. And so the pandemic has been pretty tough for the chorus and Candy's gonna give us an update. Also just a FYI for anybody that doesn't know, uh, the, our chorus's uh, original music director was Karen Bauman, who had previously been the choir director at UUCD. And in our inaugural season and the seasons before COVID, we actually met at UUCD um, in our building on Sunday afternoons. So it's my great pleasure to introduce to you, Candy Winkler. Hi, thanks, Kathy. Um, it's really a pleasure being here today. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share a little bit about the Victory Course with you and update you on where we're at following a pandemic. Um, if there's anybody here who doesn't know a lot about the Victory Course, I also just wanted to tell you a little bit about how we came to be and um, review some of the information about um, the other organizations that we collaborate with a lot on dementia efforts in the community. As you can imagine, we've been very affected by COVID over the past couple of years. Um, I know the UU choir wasn't meeting for a long time, neither were we. Um, we haven't met as a choir, but we've been managing to do some other things and we've been having a lot of fun, um, even in the midst of a pandemic. So um, the Victory Course is a program of the Victory Fund. And the Victory Fund is um, kind of a well-kept secret in the city of Duluth. It's, it's not a real large foundation, um, but it's, it has some really specific purposes, I think, that are very important. It um, came out of a community health organization, and so it still remains really health-focused. And its primary purposes are to promote health education and um, it supports especially chronic disease issues. and. A few years ago, they did a strategic planning session and they decided that they were going to focus primarily on funding efforts in two areas. And one was addiction and, was, and the other was dementia or aging efforts. And they initiated the effort to make um, Duluth a dementia friendly community, which was very significant for our community and brought together a lot of resources on the issue of dementia. So they're, they're, they took on a couple issues that I think are are um, not the most popular issues in the world. And so we really appreciate the Victory Fund for that reason. Their programs um, specifically are, they have Ovation, which is a funding resource for um, people looking for funding to help with recovery um, initiatives. Recovery Alliance Duluth is an organization under the Victory Fund and Recovery Alliance is a, a peer-based model for um, helping people recover from addictions. And then of course, there's the Victory Course, and the other um, program that's supported by the Victory Fund is, is Dementia Friendly Duluth, which is a collaborative project that I'm going to tell you a little bit more about. Dementia Friendly Duluth, um, and the reason I want you to know about it is because we do a lot of work with the Dementia Friendly Collaborative and are part of it. And so we really work jointly, especially in our training and education efforts. Um, and that's one of the primary purposes of Dementia Friendly Duluth. And Dementia Friendly Duluth Collaborative pulls together a lot of organizations that would work with aging populations, um, such as AgeWell Arrowhead and um, the Alzheimer's Association, but they also pull together some less likely um, organizations, such as um, Zeitgeist is on the Dementia Friendly Duluth Collaborative. They're um, very focused on improving transportation issues for people living with dementia. The Duluth Library is on the collaborative. And then, um, Another really important piece that they do is um, uh, we have a, a um, organization, um, I mean, we have a collaboration with the Duluth Playhouse. And the Duluth Playhouse in the last year has started doing something called sensory friendly plays. And they designed these plays specific for people living with dementia, for people living with disabilities. And what they wanted to do was make sure that people of all ages and all abilities would be able to enjoy theater. And this is very important for people living with dementia. One of the things, one of the things that happens when people um, have dementia is that sometimes as the disease progresses, they might do things that could be perceived as embarrassing by, by others. And, um, you know, they, you know, just as, as anybody with, with some level of disability. And 
Um, so what happens is that rather than go places, they 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 tend to get more isolated and, and they don't, you know, they used to love to go to symphonies or they love to go to plays or they liked, you know, to do a lot of different things and those things get taken away from them because somebody thinks that maybe they aren't won't be appropriate in that setting. Well, the Duluth Playhouse wants them to come to all of their plays, but they've set up the sensory friendly place to be especially comfortable. And for this, they, they have a little more interaction. They have things to keep people busy before the play starts and during intermission. They hand out like fidget type things to keep people focused. Um, and they're, they're growing this program. And they're very, very interested in continuing to work with us and to work with people with dementia and enrich their lives through, through drama. Um, another program of, of Dementia Friendly Duluth is, is kind of an adult story time. Um, and it was done in, in collaboration with the Duluth Library and it's called Tales and Travel. And um, Shar Johnson is the, the program director of the Dementia Friendly Duluth. And what she does is she will go now, since we haven't been able to collaborate with the library during the pandemic, she goes into facilities such as Ecumen or Elysium or any one of them and does kind of a storytelling session about a certain country. And they talk about you know, the food they eat there, they talk about the music that's played and they do examples of that. It's kind of like a little virtual traveling experience for people living with dementia. It's kind of a fun program. And, but one of the most probably important things that Dementia Friendly Youth does in our community is they do extensive awareness education training. And they go out into the community and they'll train any group that, that wants to have them. And I don't know if Shar has been done a forum with you or not, but she um, does a lot of work on, on how to interact with people living with dementia. You know, um, just like anything else, people get, get become scared or they don't know how, they feel like they don't know how to talk to people. And so rather than take a risk, they just quit talking and that leads again to more isolation. And so this um, education will teach us, you know, how to have eye contact, how to get on their level, you know, um, just all kinds of things that make you more comfortable and also make the person living with dementia more comfortable in a conversational situation. It's a really important program. The other thing she'll do is she, she trains businesses and um, people working in, in yeah, banks or grocery stores and invites them to learn how to better deal with people with dementia. You know, last summer I was in a grocery store with my brother um, on vacation and we were in a line in this grocery store and the lady in the front was holding up the line. And of course, people get impatient. And um, suddenly this woman says to the, the cashier, she said, and I just, I, I just need to tell you, I have some problems with memory. So I'm just having trouble. She was having trouble figuring out her checkbook and exactly how to write the check and that type of thing. And she told the person there who actually handled it very well. But um, I thought if, you know, if we get people trained, then they treat that as a, as a less abnormal situation and they can make the person living with, with dementia more comfortable in any kind of setting. And one of the businesses in our town that, that takes advantage of this training and, and trains their employees a couple times a year is Whole Foods Co-op. They wanna make sure that their staff is able to, to work with people and be sensitive to their needs. So that's a, a really important training. So now um, we get to the, the um, piece that's, that's actually most important to me and something that I feel very strongly about and, and love dearly, and that is the victory course. And as we were talking about before we, we started the Zoom today is, is that the Victory Course um, has been really active at the UU Church and it's been a part of, um, I mean, it's been a part of its development. We practiced there, we held our concerts there. And so we really have a strong affiliation with the people there. Also, a lot of our, our volunteer singers are from the UU. And so it's, um, we have a real strong connection with all of you. And Victory Course, um, was serving such a wonderful purpose in the community and making people aware. You remember we had very large concerts and they were enjoyed by so many people and it was a, a, a really nice way to teach people about, about dementia and, and, and the capabilities of people living with dementia, that they're still so capable of making beautiful music and enjoying this kind of process. So the pandemic greatly affected us, as you can imagine. Um, we were all set to have a concert on March 15th, 2020. Uh, we were ready to, we were, we were prepped. We had the refreshments ordered. We had everything set. And then of course the country started to really be aware of this new thing that was hitting us pretty, 
in a pretty significant manner. And so we decided after a lot of conversation that we were gonna cancel that concert, which turned out to be a really good thing because I think that was the first Sunday that UUCD canceled their services because of the pandemic. And so um, uh, that concert didn't happen. And I think as a, there were about four of us on staff at that time and, and we sat down and we were really afraid that this was just gonna be the end of the victory course you know, and, you know, into a period of time that we didn't know when it was going to end, obviously, the, you know, the pandemic, we were entering into just to totally unknown territory. Well, then we discovered something that all of us discovered through the pandemic, and that was Zoom. I don't know how familiar you were with Zoom before the pandemic started. I had been on it a few times with, you know, meetings and things like that, but it wasn't my, you know, it wasn't something I was real comfortable with. Well, we've all become more than comfortable with Zoom at this time. And in fact, how grateful we are that it's really helped us a lot during the pandemic. And we heard that a lot of, well, not a lot, but some courses were also meeting on Zoom. And so we started to do Zoom sing-along practices um, with our choir. And singing on Zoom is not like singing in a choir, obviously. You know, you can't even have two people talking at once, let alone singing together. It would just be a jumbled mess. So basically a Zoom sing-along is one person singing and the rest of us are in our houses and we're singing, but we're basically singing to ourselves. And so it's, it's fun, but it's not the most um, satisfying musical experience. I guess I can say it that way, but, it, but, we, had, but we had fun doing it. And the most important thing was that it really provided a lot of connections for people. And um, it was really significant in that way because we always made sure that we took a lot of time to um, speak with each other and, and catch up with one another. And so we had lots of people signing in um, on every Sunday at the same time that we would have been practicing, practicing at, at the UU church. And we were, we were saying together and we talked together and, um, because it was on Zoom, we were able to invite other people there. And so there were Sundays when we had people from Bemidji to say hi to Marilyn Heltzer and St. Paul to say hi to Marilyn Heltzer. <laughs> and we have people from Milwaukee to say hi, you know, to greet another choir member. And um, in fact, one Sunday, Garrison Keeler joined us because he wanted to greet Marilyn Heltzer. So Marilyn had her own little fan club on Zoom. Um, and it was fun because we got to know people's families and friends and, and um, that, that community that we felt because um, through Zoom was really valuable in getting us through the pandemic. The, <clears throat> excuse me. The um, Zoom practices were fairly labor intensive for us. I mean, we had to tape a lot of music and it was, um, it was not the easiest thing to do. And then when summer came along, we decided we would take a break from the Zooms and we would go and sing outside. <clears throat> and so during the summer months of, of 2020, we sang at different facilities. We sang in the parking lot and we had about 15 people, 15 or 16 people that came and, and joined the sing-alongs, including some of our um, choir members who have dementia. And we sang to um, people in facilities. Now, the lockdown was pretty severe at that time. And so sometimes all they did was open their windows and we'd stand outside and sing to them. Um, but sometimes like at Marywood, and I think this is where this picture was taken, they would come out on a balcony and they'd look down at us and we'd sing to them and they'd you know, clap for us and they were happy. And it, it, it made people feel good. And again, it was, it was bringing some connection and some joy into people's lives. So we felt that it was um, helping us fulfill our, our mission of promoting joy through singing by, by doing the sing-alongs. So we, sang, we did sing-alongs at different facilities throughout the summer. And then of course, once the cold weather came, <clears throat> excuse me, I, um, pardon my voice, I woke up with laryngitis this morning. So my voice is gonna hold the best that it can, but I may have a little bit of hoarseness. Excuse it's me. going great. You're doing so good, Candy. <laughs> Thanks, Brett. <clears throat> anyway, so when su once summer ended and they closed their windows and closed their doors, we couldn't sing for them anymore. Um, we weren't able to go into facilities. We just had to, you know, we went back to Zoom, which was fine. And we sang together again over Zoom for the year. Um, and then in last June, 
um, we decided to do the sing-along program again. And last year it was a lot more open. Um, people came out and sat on patios and we, and we were able to interact with them more. Um, so we had a, a really good summer singing to people in facilities once again. And we reached over 400 people with those sing-along programs, people living with dementia in facilities during, during that year. <clears throat> and then when fall came this year, they invited us into the facilities. As long as we could sing with masks, we could go in and we could sing with them. And so we've been doing that all this year. And it started out being once or twice a month and it's been getting busier and busier because people really enjoy it. And we find that people really respond to the kinds of songs that we sing. We go in and sing old favorites. We sing My Bonnie Lives Over the Ocean. We sing, you know, Zippity Doo Dah and, um, Oh gosh, just all kinds of songs like that. Take me out to the ball game. So there's songs that people know and can sing along with us with. And um, we, have, we do a lot of motions. And so if they can't sing, they do the motions. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you just one example of what happens in, in a sing-along session. We went into a facility a few weeks ago and there was a woman, it was a memory care unit. <clears throat> so it was people with quite severe dementia. And there was a woman in the front row and she was in a chair and she was all kind of curled up and had a blanket over her. And that's not unusual. We see that a lot in facilities. Um, and she was, you know, kind of half asleep and, and not very aware. And she could have stayed that way the whole time. We didn't know. But as soon as we started singing, she perked up, she lifted her head, you know, she looked at us, her eyes were bright. She got out from under her blanket. She sang every song with us she knew the words of every song and she sang along with us and you know just that gives me goosebumps when i think about it because she came to life before our very eyes and that's what music does in these kinds of situations um it it brings an energy it brings um it it just brings life back to people in a in a way it's it's a it's an amazing process and we see it on a regular basis and it really makes it motivates us to keep doing this work because we know it's important even if we can't sing together in a formal choir we know that what we're doing is important so we hope that we get back to this we want to have a choir again um, one thing i want to note about this choir this was a formal picture that we had taken um, shortly you know probably just a couple months before the pandemic hit so this is pretty much what our choir looked like when that happened. Um, we have about 14 people who were living with dementia who were choir members at that time. And we've lost a great many of them during the pandemic. And we lost them in a couple different ways. Um, some of them died. We only lost one person actually to COVID, but um, a number of them died, um, you know, from the progression of their disease or from other causes. And then some of them we lost in terms of choir membership because their disease just caused further compensation and they're no longer able to participate. So it was, it was really costly in that way. And it was difficult. Um, a lot of the caregivers and care partners of these people were in our choir as well. And, and you know, they really felt that their loved ones were failing during that time, just as so many people did in, in facilities because they were lonely, they were isolated, they couldn't see their friends, they couldn't see their families, they couldn't even intermingle with the people in the, in the facilities often when something happened. And so um, this pandemic has been very, very costly for people, um, elderly people, people in facilities, and especially people living with dementia. So it's been really kind of heartbreaking. And so in that sense, when we do start up again, we will be starting from scratch in many ways in terms of finding um, those participants that are so critical to being part of the choir. And, um, but we do hope to get back there soon. But, you know, I just wanna talk for a minute about why this work is so important. Um, and that's because the effects of music can't be underestimated. Um, Kathy sees this too, and I know she's not, because, because we, we've been part of it and we see the difference it makes. And, but I want you to think about it for a minute because music taps into all of our memories. And so why, why do we think oldies stations are so popular? You know, I listen to the 60s station as much as I can because that music is, it, it brings memories back to me. You know, like I, I hear Petula Clark singing a song and I remember the first time, you know, I had a bad breakup with a boyfriend. 
or maybe a music that was played at prom or something that when I was in Girl Scouts, it brings back tangible memories to us and we relive those things. Sometimes they're sad, sometimes they're happy, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's tapping into something very unique. And in fact, um, there's, been, there's been so many studies done now about how music affects all of us, not just people living with dementia, but there's been a lot of specific studies around people living with dementia. And they found that music actually enhances memories of dementia patients. And we used to be able to witness some of this um, after the victory course. We always had a social hour after the victory course. And so people would sing for about 45 minutes and then we'd get together and they could be with their caregivers and with their families. And, and we just all had a great time just talking together. But family members would often say that the, the, the person, their loved one with dementia was the most aware and conversational during that social time than they were at any other period because the music had stimulated them. And so they were so present. And so they really enjoyed people during that time in a way that, that they didn't get to see on other occasions. Um, there's so many social benefits of singing together. Um, but of course, the, the mental and emotional things just can't be undone. Um, one reason, one example of how it um, stirs our memory, we have just a delightful 94-year-old woman in our choir, and she's, um, she's, she's absolutely delightful, and she's, she's funny, and she's, she has um, a very, basically very little short-term memory. Um, so you kind of have the same conversation with her every time you see her, but it's a great conversation. So it's fun, you know, and, and um, she used to be a school teacher and she asks on a regular basis for us to sing zippity doo dah because when she had a classroom of kids and she said, if the kids were kind of down, she'd sing zippity doo dah with them because that's a happy song and it made them feel happy. And so she loved to sing that with her students and she loves to sing it now with the choir. And it is kind of a sign that when you're singing it, it's pretty hard to feel pretty down because it's got a lot of zip to it. But um, this, this woman just inspires all of us with her energy and, and her love of music and how she, um, you know, how she uses it and how she sees it. And, and when, we're doing, when we're doing presentations at the nursing home, she's right in front and she's doing those actions and she's telling people to sing along. Um, so it's... It, it's, it's, she's a very, very good example of the fact that there's, there can be real quality of life for people living with dementia and that music makes it even more so. Um, we hope to get back to our choir like you saw in, in this picture, but we know that we're still making a difference as long as we're touching the lives of people living with dementia and bringing joy into their lives. And we know that that's what matters. And, um, we hope that we get to come back to the UUCD. We hope that we get to invite you to a concert next year. But for now, this is the work that we're doing. And um, so if, there, if you have any questions, um, I'll be happy to answer them later. But I'd, I'd like Kathy to share with you a little bit, if she, as she said she was willing to do this, about, about what it meant to be a Victory Course member along with Marilyn. Um, they were um, Victory Course members right from the very beginning. Kathy had a lot to do with the choir even getting started, for which we're very grateful, but they've just been an amazingly important part of the choir, but I'd like her to share with you what it meant to be a choir member along with her mom. So you can see the picture behind me. The backdrop here is my mom and I uh, singing in the choir. We were founding members. Um, my mom moved to Duluth in 2014. She had lived in Bemidji for many years. She had been a vice president for programming for Minnesota Public Radio and then a station manager. Uh, she had worked with Garrison Keillor for many years. She used to produce his morning program. For those of you that remember years ago, there was a morning program on Minnesota Public Radio and she had produced that. So they've been friends for many years. And when, I, when, uh, when we were doing those Zooms, I, did, yeah, I am a little competitive. So I, we did send, I was trying to get people to come to them and I sent him an email and told them about it. So we had a Christmas sing-along Zoom and he, he came to that, which was uh, a lot of fun. So my mother now, she's in memory care at Ecumen Lakeshore. And uh, as I said, she moved here in 2014. Then two years later, she moved into memory care. Uh, she has now lost the ability to talk. She's in a wheelchair full time. I mean, um, dementia is a really tough thing to watch. But one thing that was really beautiful was even when she lost the ability, she couldn't talk. Well, she lost the ability to talk over the course of the pandemic. And the pandemic, of course, was horrible for anybody that was in any kind of uh, 
you know, long-term care or any kind of place because it was locked down and I couldn't see her for a year. Um, but before that, she had her, the ability to talk was diminished, but she could still sing. And so even, even when we couldn't really have much of a conversation, she could sing. She loved, she, she loved uh, You Are My Sunshine. She had a dog that she named Sunshine. When we'd go to the victory course afterwards, when we'd sit um, doing the socialization time, we'd spontaneously burst into song and all of us would sing You Are My Sunshine. So it really made a huge difference. And now when I go to visit her, um, which I'll be going over this afternoon because my most excellent uh, Unitarian helper, Doug Stevens, comes and stays here with Tina on Sunday afternoons. So I can go see my mom, even though she's not, she's not able to talk. Uh, pretty much what I do is I go over there and sing. And sometimes she still will mouth the words to songs. And sometimes she'll whisper the words to songs. And sometimes she'll fill in, fill in the blanks. Um, and it's so the victory chorus and the other thing is before the victory chorus, when she moved here, we did, I was singing in the Echoes of Peace Choir with Sarah Thompson. Some of you are familiar with that community choir and we went to that, which was fine, but the victory chorus was better for us in a way because we had so much more support. We had other volunteers mobility wise. Our church was a great spot for that. We could drive right into the underground parking garage. Paul Eckhart, who was singing in the choir at that time, came down and helped me get my mom out of the car and into the wheelchair, and we went upstairs. It just was so much, there was just so much support that was there and available to us to sing in this particular choir. Um, I was also, I was involved in, the, the other thing I always say is that as a uh, social worker, I'm retired now, but social work was my profession, and for all those years, I was interested in child protection and child welfare work, and I didn't really care about old people. And then my mom got dementia and then, man, I'm all over dementia. I'm totally into it. I'm learning all about it. And so this, uh, this issue about the part of your brain that is connected to uh, music and about how that just works long after everything else does. Um, anecdotally, people knew this. And then eventually there were a series of studies and lo and behold, it's actually true. So um, I am going to have to break away for just a minute here because uh, some of you know this, some of you don't, but Tina, my spouse Tina now has a cognitive impairment, unfortunately, and I uh, can never be left alone. Unfortunately, she's not really into music, which is also, you know, that's too bad. But anyways, I see she's getting out of bed. I got to run upstairs, but, but I'll, I'm going to take the computer with me, but I'm going to have to turn you off. I mean, turn myself off. <laughs> so Candy, handed it back to you. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, I think um, Kathy's story around, around Marilyn is especially especially poignant, but I think anybody who's in the choir is able to, to tell you some of the same things. Um, you know, people who live with dementia, are it's it can be a heartbreaking disease, but it also can um, uh, have its joyful moments. Um, my sister died of dementia about a year and a half ago in the, in, in the middle of the pandemic. And the last Thanksgiving that we were with her when her disease had progressed quite deeply, she... Um, she, she had been a church organist, she had been a musician, she'd been a singer, um, but she'd lost most of those capabilities. But that day we got her to sit down at the piano and she sat there and I didn't, even, I didn't think that show could play by ear. And she's played probably about a half an hour worth of hymns, of old hymns from our childhood. And she knew them all and she just sat there and played and played and played. And um, that's it's it's in us music is in us and um we don't forget those things and i think that's that's what we try to do with the victory course and and as we go out into facilities we try to bring joy but we also try to just help people you know recapture some of the happiness that they had when they sang those songs in their past so that's what i am uh, what a wonderful time to hear about this so thank you so much for that and yes i think we are caught up if there are no more questions all right. Thanks so much, everyone. That wraps up our forum for today and uh, see some of you at the church service on Zoom or in person. Thanks, Candy. Thank you.